بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه ده ما بعد ما شاء الله tonight we have notable guests استاذ عدلي بسم الله your محمد شفيق the star student of diploma course you're still single right الحمد لله الحمد لله for everything Okay, in Surah Al-A'raf, there are actually many stories related to Musa alayhi salam with the children of Israel. But I will mention one story in particular since it is related to our time and it concerns unity and being together. When Musa alayhi salam went to, to the appointment of Allah Azza wa Jal, he left his brother Harun alayhi salam behind and he gave him certain instructions وَقَالَ مُوسَى لِيَخِيهِ هَارُونَ خْلُفْنِي فِي قَوْمِي وَأَصْلِحْ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ Reform, take care of my people and do not follow the path of the corrupt people when Musa السلام, went, what happened to the children of Israel? They were divided, as usual, and they worshipped the calf. So Musa السلام, came back. When he saw what he saw, he couldn't believe it. The news came to him earlier. Before he comes back to his people, Allah Azza wa told him that your people worship the calf. But when he saw that with his eyes, what happened? Allah Azza wa said, وَأَلْقَ الْأَلْوَاحِ He threw the tablets. He already had the knowledge. But when he saw it with his eyes, it was different. That's why scholars say, no matter whatever you hear, when you see it with your eyes, it is different. I tell you this from personal experience because I'm sure you all know what's going on in Syria. But you haven't been there. If you are there and you see that, it is different. That's why in Arabic we have a very famous statement. Laysa al mukhbar kal mu'ayin. The one who's getting the news is not like the one who is going through that, who is seeing that. Laysa al mukhbar kal mu'ayin. So, anyways, Musa alayhi salam, he was upset. And who did he put the blame on? Harun. He took him from his head and his beard. What did Harun say? Yabna um, la ta'khud bi lihyati wa la bi rasi. Musa alayhi salam was powerful, was strong. Harun alayhi salam told him, Oh, my brother, don't grab me from my beard, from my head. إِنِّي خَشِيتُ I was afraid. أَنْ تَقُولَ فَرَّقْتَ بَيْنَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ I was afraid that you would have said, I divided the children of Israel. Harun alayhi salam was softer than Musa alayhi salam. But here in this ayah, there is an important lesson. Harun alayhi salam saw them even worshipping the calf. But he couldn't do anything. When Musa alayhi salam came, he told him, I was afraid that you would tell me I caused division. Causing division, that's the point, that's the lesson of tonight. Causing division is one of the worst things. And Islam always telling us to be united. This is in Surah Ali Imran. In Surah Al-Anfal, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ In Surah Al-An'am, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُمْ وَكَانُوا شِيَعًا لَسْتَ مِنْهُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ So many ayat reminding us that we have to be united. We cannot be divided. Now we have two issues. We have difference, and that is tolerated, and we have division. Difference is only a matter of preference. We have four schools of thought in fiqh. 
there are actually more than that, but the famous ones. And someone would say, you raise your hands like that, you raise your hand like that, you put your hands down. That is a difference of preference. I'm not saying your prayer is wrong. I'm just saying the sunnah is like that. The sunnah is like that. That's it. Both of us are correct. But when I believe that you're wrong and I'm right, that is the danger. At the time of the Prophet wasallam, even the companions, they had their differences. And that was okay. But to be divided, to think that I'm the only one who's right and you're wrong, that is the problem. That happened to the children of Israel. It is happening in our time, unfortunately. We see nowadays what is happening, especially in Syria and Iraq, and people ask. Because two days ago, there was the khutbah of the so-called Khalifa, who asked people, who demanded from people the pledge, the bay'ah, that they have to give him the pledge. And people are talking about al dawla al-Islamiyya, the Islamic State. One thing you have to admire with all the things that they have been doing, the killing of the Muslims, shedding their blood, attacking the free army of the Syrians, and all that, still, you have to admire that they have unity. They have one purpose. They want to establish the Khilafah. Right, wrong, whatever people are saying, they did that. <coughs> and that is the power of unity. I heard from many brothers, because they are there. They are aware of the situation. They are suffering from those people more than they are suffering from the regime. And the regime is not doing anything for them. Why? Because it's serving its purpose. It is dividing the groups. Because it's asking them all to be under their leadership. So that is just an example of the consequence of division. So in the story of Musa السلام, with Harun, it was very important to learn that Musa السلام, he instructed his brother, keep the children of Israel together. When Musa السلام, came back, Harun السلام, told him, I was afraid that you might have said, I caused division. Nowadays, we have people, unfortunately, who are causing division. Differences are okay. We shouldn't be unhappy with the differences. That's our nature. I like this, you like that. That is our nature. It's actually a reflection of the flexibility of the religion. It's a beautiful thing. Yes, if we can all be together on one opinion, that is fine, alhamdulillah. But even at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, some companions chose one way, other companions chose another way. And that was okay. Nobody said to the other, you're wrong and I'm right. But to be divided, that is the dangerous thing. So, we have the same prayer. We have the same qibla. We have the same month of fasting. We have the same two days of Eid to celebrate. We have the same place for Hajj. It's more convenient to establish a place here and we can make Hajj here. We save the issue of traveling and visa. No, Allah Azza wa wants all of us to be together in one place. There is a purpose for that, there is a wisdom. So we need to remember that. Whoever is united, even on a wrong cause, you will find them strong. And that is the example. And whoever is divided, even if what they are saying essentially is right, they will not reach their goal. Even in businesses, you see that as well. Unity is very important. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they were all on one, like one man, one body, following the Prophet ﷺ. But whenever each group wants to do their own thing, there will not be success. So that is actually part of the stories that came through tonight. There are many stories. The story of the one who was righteous and then he turned back on his heels. It was said his name was Bal'am ibn Ba'ura. Matters are judged not by the beginning but by the end. I'll talk about that later, inshallah. جزاكم الله خيرا صلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى صحبه اجمعين. استاذ عدلي you don't want to say anything? Are you sure? Okay. Tonight's question 
about one of the companions who had a very unique quality. He is the only one that the Prophet ﷺ considered his testimony equivalent to testimony of two people. The only companion. Even Abu Bakr radiallahu an, his testimony was the testimony of one man. But this man, this companion, his testimony was worth two people. Who is that <coughs> companion? That's tonight's question. Jazakumullah khair. Announcements? Do I have an Okay. Can I sit down? Yeah, you can sit down. <laughs> sit down.